Now, one of the strangest things to me is that Square Enix put out a big Dragon Quest game that's fantastic, that many people love, that's been around for multiple years, and they never got around to officially localizing it here in the US and in the Western territories, and that's Dragon Quest X Online. Now, they did make an offline version of the game a number of years ago, and many felt that would lead to Dragon Quest X being localized and Dragon Quest X coming over because they don't have to maintain the servers and they don't have to worry about all the language and all this different stuff that you would go with the MMO. But that never happened as well. And it had me thinking, wait a minute, not only have we not gotten Dragon Quest X, but what's been happening with Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake and Dragon Quest 12? Now, recently in the Famitsu sales, Square Enix had another expansion or new version of Dragon Quest X online, and it's called The Door to the Future and the Sleeping Girl. It sold over 17 thousand units on the nintendo switch and another 7333 units on the playstation 4 for a total of 25,000 units plus for the game and i'm thinking to myself hmm, they're still making or working or releasing new expansions or different things but they never actually localized the game and their radio silence on dragon quest 3 hd 2d remake and dragon quest 12 have me thinking that Square Enix is absolutely gearing up for something completely different for Dragon Quest going forward in the future and what their plans are and they're probably tied into what I discussed before with the Nintendo Switch 2 but we're going to talk about that and a lot more awesome RPG news Visions of Mana Star Ocean you're going to want to hear some of the awesome stuff that we have here and some things that I think is going to be big for the future of some of your favorite franchises out out there but before we get into that what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you are someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first now like i discussed before in the previous video which i'll have a link for you guys in the description i think that dragon quest games have a real big affinity for Nintendo systems. If you go back and look at the past Dragon Quest games, Dragon Quest X, for example, that was announced with the Wii, or was announced for the Wii, more like it. And that was like the first system that we heard about it for. You look at Dragon Quest IX, that was a Nintendo DS game. You look at Dragon Quest XI. Now we already know about Dragon Quest III HD 2D Remake. They didn't announce platforms. We already know about Dragon Quest XII. They didn't announce platforms. And both of those games, we've heard nothing outside of those original debut trailers. We have the CG logo trailer for Dragon Quest 12, and we have the initial debut gameplay trailer for Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, and absolutely nothing for Dragon Quest 10 Online, and Dragon Quest 10 Offline for Western Territory. So all of this radio silence has me thinking that they're retooling, regearing, and getting things ready for maybe the Nintendo Switch 2 with the reveals of these games because of what they've done in the past. Dragon Quest has a lot of sales that they usually get on Nintendo platforms and yeah you can talk about it for the nintendo switch but some of these games might be better off on the nintendo switch too for example dragon quest 12 if you're looking to have a bit more graphical showcase of the game and we know that the struggles that they had with dragon quest 11 on the nintendo switch i think it makes sense to put that on the nintendo switch too and of course it could be on playstation 5 or xbox or pc it's going to be on other systems but i just think that they have that first and foremost hey we're thinking about japan first with these games and if you look at the landscape in japan it's completely dominated by the nintendo switch if you even look at the last famitsu sales for the past week you have seen multiple big games come out this year for the playstation 5 persona 3 reload dragon's dogma 2 final fantasy 7 rebirth grand blue fantasy relink like a dragon infinite wealth multiple titles and each one of those games were never able to do well enough on the PlayStation 5 in Japan to boost console sales above the Nintendo Switch, a system that's going into its eighth year. So Square Enix is absolutely thinking about the landscape of Japan first and foremost, and of course worldwide, they're thinking about that too, but they wanna make sure that they set up the next Dragon Quest game to have big debut sales, to have big opening sales, and maybe the Nintendo Switch might not be able to handle the game properly in terms of what they're looking for for it so maybe they're waiting and re-revealing it 
with the Nintendo Switch 2 for Dragon Quest 12. Now, when it comes to Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, I think this game at this point is going to be cross-gen. I think it's going to be across the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5, the Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch 2, PC. Now, some people do have this game potentially being an exclusive for Nintendo with Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch 2, but I don't think that's going to be the case with this one. It's an HD 2D game. It's Unreal Engine 4. Then they have their own modifiers and middleware that they work with to make the game look the way that it does and operate like how HD 2D games do so i don't see that happening but i do think that it's strange that they've completely just went silent here so i'm guessing they're waiting for a big nintendo direct or something to reveal the game and where and when you're going to be able to play it but i think that they're absolutely waiting for that nintendo switch 2 as well dragon quest 10 is in a little bit of a different boat because that game is across multiple platforms for like a decade at this point between the nintendo wii between a streaming nintendo 3ds version that i'm not even sure is around anymore between the wii u version of the game the nintendo switch version of the game the ps4 ps5 i mean that thing's on everywhere but for some reason they still don't want to localize it and i don't understand why it's not been localized they've made so much money on it at this point they've done everything that they can do they're still releasing some remixes or new campaigns or whatever the heck this is the door to the future and the sleeping girl they're still releasing things for it so it's still a very profitable venture for them and they've made an offline version of the game this should have been out on the nintendo switch years ago at this point along with a localized version on ps4 ps5 whatever they want to do so it's just really weird what they've been doing with dragon quest but once again i think that there is some method to the madness here although square enix has been going through quite a bit overall with changing of their president and retooling their game development studios and what they're going to be working on so we'll see how everything works out in the future but speaking of the future let's talk a little bit about visions of mana and the game that's coming out this summer summer because we've got brand new details on this game and it looks incredible i love the visual style there's a brand new trailer that you guys are seeing right here and we've got more story details as well plus a bunch of information on classes and all of that which i'm not going to go over everything because i don't want to see all that right now because i want to be surprised in the game but they have different classes it's pretty much classic mana in terms of second densetsu 3 when you can change classes customize your character it's pretty cool what they're doing here plus they detail some of the other gameplay elements surrounding what's happening with this game so it's good to see more on it so square enix has released new information footage and screenshots for visions of mana introducing the game's story characters elemental vessels and pequels additionally producer masaru oyamada confirmed in an interview with famitsu that the game is developed by oka studios so let's talk about the story a bit here in tiania the fire village everyone is preparing to celebrate the coming of the fairy and the naming of the alm Every four years, alms from around the world are chosen to travel to the Tree of Mana and rejuvenate the flow of mana power. A soul guard is also chosen to ensure the alms' safe pilgrimage. Val is one such guard. On the day of the fairy's arrival, Val brings his childhood friend to the festival. As the sun falls beneath the skyline, all the spectators wait with bated breath, hoping to be chosen as an alm. The fairy finally descends before Val's friend, appointing her the alm of fire. The villagers bid them both farewell, praying for their success as they embark on an adventure of a lifetime. Now let's talk a little bit about the elemental vessels, mystical artifacts that house the power of elements within them. Each vessel contains mana from a different element. You can wield these powers in combat and while exploring. In exploration, there's also elemental triggers. You can use the elemental vessels at the curiously growing triggers scattered throughout the land and harness its individual power to generate gusts of wind, move rocks, or even slow down time to open pathways and find hidden items on the map. Once you get a new vessel, don't forget to revisit areas you've already passed through. Accessing other triggers will unlock new places for you to explore. A little bit of Metroidvania in there. Now, in the battles, I talked a little bit about switching classes. We've got some more details on that. You can obtain various elemental vessels to switch your characters to new classes. Different classes unlock different stats, weapon types, and unique moves or abilities based on their corresponding element. Some abilities can restrict an enemy's movements or cast regenerative effects to heal your allies. Change classes to see which element has the best skills for your individual fighting style. There's also elemental vessels, exploration, and triggers. 
and they have a bunch more information in terms of what vessels can do for you and how you can get around with them and changing your classes so this all looks really good i'm very excited to play visions of mana i think it's going to be a beautiful adventure this is the type of game that it's not the super triple a oh my gosh 100 million dollars invested into it but it's a high quality double a type of rpg that's going to fill the void in between some of the bigger games this summer i think that's a great time for it a lot of the big rpgs came out early in the year all right next to it and right now when it comes to summer it's kind of open for visions of mana to do better than maybe some are expecting so i'm looking forward to visions of mana quite a bit i think the graphical style is beautiful the combat system and what they're doing with the game is awesome nothing too crazy or mind-blowing out of the ordinary for a mana game but still very clean and very nice on the modern systems and i still believe that the nintendo switch 2 version is coming later down the line but i'm going to be playing on the playstation 5 first and foremost and maybe i'll pick up a copy on the switch 2 later when they do announce it so what do you guys think about visions of mana and the new trailer and what they've shown off here let me know in the comment section but speaking of new let's talk about star ocean the second story r the version 1.1 update and this is something that all rpgs should do if they want to extend the life of their game and get more people to even try out the game bring out some free extra content after some time to rebuild interest and to get people like myself talking about the game out there so we've got a brand new difficulty mode we've got new raid enemies and more so publisher square enix and developer gem drops will release the version 1.1 update for star ocean the second story r that is out right now at this point now the version 1.1 update includes the following features we have a new difficulty mode chaos new raid enemies added 10 wise men 10 wise men appear at the assault actions. We've got new equipment added, new NPC illustrations added, character graphics collection added, which is a feature to enjoy each character's expressions, endings collections added, replay the ending scenes you have already reached at any time, plus you can customize your subsequent playthroughs after completing the game. So very good here, guys. A lot of great stuff that they've added in with difficulty modes and content and new people to battle. I love this. This is exactly what you should be doing here with your game. And I think that more people are going to play this game now that they've got extra content in here. Now, they've already done a lot with this title. Star Ocean, the second story R was a game that when it launched, it did better than people were expecting when it comes to the sales of it, because Star Ocean is not a franchise that has blockbuster sales. In the last game, it was okay, but it necessarily didn't review as well as some would have liked. And we've seen that the last number of big 3D Star Ocean games have not done that well, Metacritic-wise and sales-wise. But Star Ocean The Second Story R did way better reviews-wise, and I think that sales, it's holding up okay. So I think this is going to help out as well. Bunch of new illustrations, a bunch of new cool different stuff to access. So this is definitely a good thing for Star Ocean and fans of classic RPGs being brought back. So what are your thoughts on everything that we talked about here in this big RPG news video? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you are someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.